I'm delighted to say and to be joined by Anita. Um, first of all, before I hand over to Anita to introduce herself, um, I thought I'd say hello. Hello, I'm Andy Chandler. I'm CEO of Barefoot Coaching. So um, Anita, it's really nice. We've only just met and I know we had a brief conversation a minute ago. Um, but I thought, I wonder whether I could ask you to introduce yourself in a way that would be meaningful for you, actually. So how would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, thanks, Andy. Um, and yeah, I am Anita Guru. I am an occupational psychologist. I'm a qualified coach. I'm a motivational speaker and I'm also a trainee psychotherapist. And I suppose what underpins all of that is my passion um, for mental health. Um, and my passion comes from my own lived experience. So for me, you know, talking things around trauma and mental health, supporting others who are struggling with their mental health is for me really important. Um, and prior to, for, to me getting into this kind of area, yeah. I worked in learning and development for nearly 20 years across a variety of sectors, organisations. Um, so, yeah, that's a, a bit about me. And a, sort of a fun fact, I'm also a poet. Um, so uh, that's a, yeah, a bit of a, a bit an overview of, of who I am and, and what I do. I love I love that. Well, obviously now I want to know all about the poetry, but I think let's let me go back in. Let me go back one second. Just ask you about what got you into coaching in the first place. You know, at what point when you were in your L and D career for twenty years in, I guess, different organisations. What 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 was it? Was there a catalyst for moving into coaching? Um, I really so I was doing it as part of my job role, um, supporting managers, supporting employees, building it into training programs. So from like group coaching perspective. And for me, that I feel real energy. I get real energy from working with people one to one, um, and and taking them on a journey with those light bulb moments, seeing the growth, seeing the development. Um, and so for me, a few years ago, I thought, let me just formalise this in in a sort of coaching qualification. And sometimes you almost need that validation and and everything that sits behind it to be able to kind of come to the world as, as a coach and, and operate in that field. Love that. Thank you. We chatted earlier. We're not going to talk at all about where you trained, but let's say it wasn't barefoot, but it was an accredited <laughs> coach training program. And that's what matters. <laughs> so, so around the time of the pandemic as well, so that was a hell of a time to go through that kind of learning experience. Anita, can I just ask you about the, the, the program itself? Because it is the first time that um, certainly we've run any kind of program around trauma Mm -hmm. I think within Barefoot and I just I wonder whether you could just tell us a little bit about um, a little bit about the program actually and kind of and, and where that came from. Um, so yeah the program it's very much geared towards supporting coaches to work in a way with their clients with an understanding of trauma so you know what is trauma how does it manifest so be that in the mind or in the body understand what kind of how that manifests in someone so how can that adapt people's beliefs their, their behaviors their relationships um and when it presents in a in the coaching um world and when you're working with a client what is your role as a coach so where does your role start and where does your role end so when might you be signposting what might you be signposting someone to? And I think that the really key message here is, you know, as coaches, you wouldn't be working with the trauma. Um, it's more so if it presents, you can recognize it and understand, you know, what kind of tools and techniques that you might want to apply in that scenario. Um, so yeah, it's it's very much understanding what works, what doesn't and actually getting a lot of practice in using some of those techniques through the training, which then builds that confidence, confidence to competence to actually use it when you're working with a client who might be mm -hmm. presenting with trauma. And I just on that, I'm not wishing to weird you out, but I was uh, following you on LinkedIn. Uh, and I noticed an exchange and some notes that you left on somebody's comment. There was a comment from an individual, I can't remember, and I probably won't name them anyway, but they, they'd said, you know, I'm done with coaches stepping into trauma. Uh, I think it was something like inexperienced coaches stepping into trauma. Mm -hmm. you, were very, you were very clear at that time about your view on it. So maybe if I can just ask you, what is, what is your view around the role that coaches should play when confronted uh, mm -hmm. with potential trauma in one of their clients? Um, firstly, 
it's not to try and process or work with it because you can a re-traumatize trigger the individual and you won't necessarily be equipped to deal with that um, and you can leave someone quite vulnerable but it's also to know and recognize when it's presenting um, and when you might need to go on and, and signpost so do they need to talk to a therapist and really be able to hold the space for them but not try to process the trauma in a way it's funny isn't it it's kind of like this kind of tension created between wanting to create this very unique space for a client in the coaching that kind of coaching space where thoughts and feelings can unfold but at the same time we're very quick to talk about boundaries and one is i think the boundary of safety that's mm -hmm. created the boundary of of um, form of confidentiality but also boundaries for ourselves boundaries between our kind of our confidence our own competence actually and I know that within Barefoot and many other coach accredited coach training programs, you know, we talk a lot about the boundaries between the between the different disciplines, the boundary between coaching and therapy. Um, and so I'm really interested by, in a way, what you're talking about here is that there is a kind of boundary here at the point of identifying trauma and then mm -hmm. deciding on what you do at that point, I guess. Yeah, and, and I suppose it's it's like, like you're describing in a in the coaching program, you're told, you know, you don't step into the role of a therapist when you're a coach. And that's kind of where the boundaries need to come in and to, to protect yourself, but also to protect your client because you you might be crossing over into a realm which you don't have the skills or the knowledge to be able to support them in what it is that they need mm. in that space. So tell me just the nuts and bolts of the program. Uh, how long is it over? How, how many sessions are we talking about? Um, so it's two four hour sessions. So a week apart. Um, and the first course, the first date kicks off on the 23rd of April. The second date is on the 30th. Yeah. Um, so it's very interactive. It's very engaging. So it's not going to be me sitting here and telling you what you should and shouldn't do and what you need to know there's going to be a lot of interaction, a lot of opportunities to practice, um, but also an opportunity for you to reflect on what's coming up for you as a coach, because I think that's really important when you're covering such a, a big topic, because some people, it, it will resonate a bit more in terms of their own experiences. So I think it's good to understand what's coming up um, for the, the coaches as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very much looking at um, trauma from a sort of, zoom out what is what is trauma what is it all about how does it kind of how is it identifiable how what are the kind of symptoms how can it present but then also as a coach um how would you be managing it when it comes up with a client how can you recognize that perhaps it's a you know a, it's a trauma response that they're describing and how might you work with that um as a coach and then and then there's a section on you know where well, what in the, for kind of an extreme when someone is experiencing trauma be it PTSD symptoms and they're quite unwell kind of what do you need to be doing to make sure that person is safe um there's a level you know reduce the level of risk and how you support them to to go on to actually get the professional support um so that they are kept safe and is there some work in there is there anything that you talk specifically about kind of practical tools or even kind of signposting Mm -hmm. uh, to enable people to to seek kind of more uh, uh, professional help from professionals who are able to deal safely with trauma yeah absolutely so there'll be yeah there's a section on signposting and there's also a section on kind of you know if there's a symptoms are being presented what tools can you um, use to help that person in that moment so you're not you haven't intentionally re-traumatized them or triggered them but it can come through because end of the day we're all humans um so what kind of techniques can you be applying but then also you get an opportunity to practice using some of those techniques so you it feels a little bit more familiar um, and just kind of building that sort of memory muscle so it's, it's more accessible when you need it lovely i'm thinking about the kind of people who are going to be listening in to you now and kind of um kind of no doubt fascinated and really curious about trauma and I'm thinking about, well, who would be watching it from a barefoot point of view? And probably chances are there'll be people considering coaching. You may not have coached at all before. There will be people who will be going through our current accredited coach training program. There'll be people that will absolutely have gone through that program. 
and will be relatively new and they'll be people who are very experienced. Like thinking about who's going to really benefit, do you think, from this particular programme? Um, that's an interesting question. So I, you know, you, I am seeing it a lot more that there's, you know, training courses and programmes around being a trauma-informed coach or working with trauma in coaching. And I think they are all given really different messages. So I think it's for anyone who has an interest in trauma or has worked with a client who's presented with trauma, but perhaps you weren't quite sure and didn't, didn't know how to kind of approach it. Um, yeah, qualified coaches. So from my experience, a lot of people will have experienced all different levels of trauma, what we call small T trauma. Um, so that is perhaps has a lesser impact on someone and what we call big T trauma. So these are big events which might be life-threatening, um, long-lasting, leaving long-lasting conditions and mm -hmm. things like that. So you don't know what was going to come through. Who's going to come through your, your coaching sessions? What clients you might be working with? So I think it really builds on your own, cre I suppose, credibility um, and credentials and competence as a coach to work with whatever your clients are presenting. And I think it just builds on, on your skill set. Okay, thank you. So, so for, kind of first and foremost, this is really about, as you were saying, being a trauma, becoming a trauma informed coach. That is not becoming a coach who can work with trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about uh, being a coach who can identify the presence of trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, may not certainly would not be able to diagnose anything more than that around that trauma, but would understand potentially some options that they then have when presented with that. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me ask you one, one final question, which I can't help but ask. If you weren't running this course on trauma, what would you be running a course on? That's a really good question. Um, and, and let me just take it a step back. I suppose my interest in trauma is because I have experienced a um, number of traumatic events over my life. Um, and seven years ago was diagnosed with PTSD after becoming an inpatient at a psychiatric hospital. So I suppose for me, now looking back, now that I understand trauma a lot more, I can see how it was playing out in my life, um, how it led to me becoming really unwell. Um, and when I was going through the process of recovery and healing, I did invest a lot in understanding trauma. So for me now, it feels like, yeah, it's kind of come a bit full circle where, you know, you know, seven, seven years ago, I was sat in a psychiatric hospital, but now I'm here, I've come through um, and able to actually use my experiences to help and support others. And and I know coaching and coaches play a key role in that space. So I think as much as I can equip other people with the right skills, that's for me is really, really important. Um, so I have a absolute interest and investment in not just trauma but I do a lot around mental health raising awareness develop sort of various training and, and supporting others but just to kind of mental health is my passion and developing and supporting others um my other passion so if I wasn't doing this it would be something around dancing and it's completely different <laughs> so, uh, I yeah I I've always said if I wasn't in learning and development I would be a dancer or doing something because I absolutely love it I come to life it's it's just something that gives me so much energy and and it was quite interesting in the pandemic I I started running virtual Zumba classes so I kind of dabbled in it <laughs> and then it ended but yeah if I wasn't doing trauma then it would be dancing and and you know the two could actually come together in some way because trauma lives in the body and it manifests in the body and dance is actually a way of of supporting some of the symptoms and, and working through trauma so yeah maybe that's something for the future to bring them together beautifully beautifully said Anita can I say thank you first of all for sharing for sharing all of that and a really compelling reason why trauma matters to you in particular really want to say thank you I think it sounds like a really exciting program um, and I'm really looking forward to giving lots of other coaches the opportunity who are curious about trauma um, and want to know more to, to come and join the programme and uh, have that experience with you in particular. Anita, thanks so much. Thank you. And yeah, I hope to, to meet um, lots of new coaches on, on the course.